take place every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. And we're so excited we get this opportunity to come before you, not only just in prayer, but God has blessed us tremendously over the past eight years to have some outstanding speakers that has poured into us for over the eight years that we've been established here uh, under the leadership of Dr. Kenneth Green. So we're so grateful also for this outstanding man of God that God had given him that vision and he's continued to carry it on here uh, with our help and the leadership here of all the administrative team here at the National Men's Prayer Call. So with that being said, we just wanna just welcome you and thank you uh, on this day, because this day was not promised October the 7th, 2021, but God has seen fit for us to witness this day. So we're grateful and thankful for it. And we just want to take time out this morning to say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you also, Lord, for the opportunity. We have a gentleman that's going to be pouring into us this morning for the first time on the National Men's Prayer Call. And we're excited to have him. He's ready to go. I know we're going to get him out of the bullpen here pretty soon, but, and we'll have more information about him coming up here shortly, but we're just grateful to have uh, him with us here this morning. Obviously, he could be doing other things, but he's chosen to come on and speak from his heart, and our topic for the month is be men of courage. Courage is something that you obviously, God has uh, given us that uh, courage. Uh, without him, there's not possible for us to even be able to establish anything that's going to be courageous. So we're, we're just grateful for that, that God has instilled that in us, each and every man. And we're just going to go ahead and continue to do what God wants us to do. So we're just thankful this morning for that. And so let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and open us up in prayer so we can get this gentleman, like I say, out of the bullpen so he can speak from his heart what God has laid upon it. So. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and God of Jacob. Lord, once again, we want to take time out to say thank you. We want to say thank you because your word says, Father, that we must seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness will be added unto us, Lord. So we're going to be obedient, first of all, for that. And Lord, we also want to say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, for those that, Lord, that's continued to go out on the front line of the first responders, Lord, those that are continue, Lord, to just go ahead and just do tireless work, Lord, because, Lord, this is what they were called to do, Lord. And we just ask right now that you give them the comfort, the strength that they need to continue on their assignment, Lord. It's not an easy task, but, Lord, thank you for equipping them for the battle. And, Lord, we thank you for them, their family, and continue to just lift them up before you. And Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, that for those, Lord, that are in need of prayer. Lord, you know who they are. And Lord, we just want to just take time out this morning to say thank you for covering them with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says that there is no weapon formed against them will prosper. And Father, we thank you for that this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord, right now, Lord, because you're still in the midst of things, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord, for your hand that was in the midst of that, that, that the shooting that took place yesterday here in Dallas there. At the Lord, you allowed things to be in order. No one was killed. And we're grateful for that and thankful for that. And Lord, I just thank you right now for those students, Lord, that are still shaking up, Lord. I just ask you just covering that campus, campus covering the administrative that was able to be alert and to make things happen immediately. Thank you. Thank you. We don't, Take that for granted. We could be talking about several deaths this morning. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. We don't take anything for granted, Lord, because the Bible wants us to be able to come to you and all things that we do come to you in prayer. So we thank you for that this morning. And Lord, we thank you this morning for the opportunity for the men to be able to get on this morning, Lord. They're on this call for one purpose, and that's just to hear a word from you, Lord. And we thank you for them. We ask also that you bless them Bless their house, O oh Lord. We thank you right now that every need is met according to your riches and glory, Christ Jesus, that there's no lack in any man's household. Thank you for that. Also, we thank you for complete healing in each and every man's body uh, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. We bind any attack that the enemy may try to come against us because the word says that there's no weapon formed against us will prosper. <laughs> 
Ah, we thank you for that. We thank you right now for also complete healing in Dr. Kenneth Green's body from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And I thank you right now, Lord, as he continue to get stronger and stronger each and every day. We cover him with the blood of Jesus. And we also thank you for First Lady Green. Oh my God, thank you, Father, for, the st for her standing right in the gap. Ah, oh God, thank you for this outstanding woman of God. And Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, for blessing us with our helpmate. We're grateful for our helpmate because the word of God says a house can't stand if it's divided and, and two cannot uh, be together except the grail of the word. It's the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. So we thank you for that. Thank you for our offspring. Thank you for watching over them as they go back to school or going to school or they're going to their workplace. Thank you that your angels are camped all around them. Oh, thank you for hedge protection over them. And also all the students worldwide, though, on the campuses, uh, we bind any, anyone with any negative thought that even would try to even copycat what took place yesterday. Oh, no, devil, you are a lie. We bind you right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you right now for your protection over them. And Father, we thank you right now for those that are on the prayer list. We lift them up before you. I just ask right now you continue to cover our dear friend, uh, Miss Grace Edwards. We thank you. She's getting stronger and stronger, not only in her body, but in her faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's where you establish your healing from. <laughs> oh, God, we thank you for that right now for her. And also, we pray right now for Clifford Edwards as he's home. We thank you for getting him, renewing his strength. Oh, thank you for renewing his mind as well with the word of God. We thank you for him. And Lord, I just thank you right now that there is no weapon formed against us will prosper. And we thank you that you allow us to walk by faith and not by sight. And we thank you once again for the opportunity. Also, for the gentleman that's been reported to us, uh, Brother Corey Fox, we thank you for him. I ask right now, you hold, you, his head, you put the hedge protection around him, cover him right now, allow him to speak, not of himself, nor the flesh, but continue to allow him to grow in his ministry, in his workplace, his business, his family. Cover him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning, brothers. Good morning. Um, you know, the enemy is a liar. And, uh, he doesn't want us to move forward with victory because we're bringing the power of prayer and personal development to men across the nation. So um, I'm, um, this morning, I'm having uh, some difficulties with um, my internet. Um, so um, it's a little glitchy, and I do apologize for that. Um, but um, nevertheless, we are moving forward with the victory that we have being men of God. And now this morning, we got a young man whose, uh, whose message to youth and young adults has been resonating and exploding and exciting across the nation. He's a Black Belt speaker. And if you don't know about the Black Belt speaker movement with Dr. Ruben West, you need to uh, just Google that and you will be, be tremendously blessed. And this morning, uh, we have Corey Fox. And Corey um, has developed what he called the Fox Principles. And as I was talking with him and sharing with him, there's something about his story and his, his, his enthusiasm has leaped out and uh, is, has been uh, something that's been on fire for me. So I just thank you, thank you. I thank him for, uh, for having the, uh, the um, courage to come forth. This is his first time before an audience. And, and uh, for some reason, when a gentleman come on uh, on this platform, they're a little bit um, intimidated because this is this is the Lord's, uh, Lord's work. So we have to make sure that as we bring individuals from across the nation, that they realize the value and the uh, and just the exposure that this is bringing to up and encouraging from across the nation. So with that being said, it's our honor to bring to you Mr. Corey Fox from Topeka, Kansas. Corey, are you there, sir? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? 
can hear you well. Everybody hear me okay? I, I, I just have I just have one request right now. If anybody's uh, uh, not muted, can you uh, some, can you mute yourself? Make sure everybody's muted. And I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, this is a great honor and a tribute. And like he said earlier, he said that the devil comes to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy. And just like with his internet, he's having problems with it. And sometimes in our lives, we have problems too. And like right now, I'm looking at all these men and, you know, like he said, they you get intimidated because I'm around a lot of older men, wise men, and that's what the wisdom and, and, and the devil try to do that to me all week. He tries for me not to even come on here to even want to speak. And I almost tempted to call Johnny and say, Johnny, man, hold on, man. I, I, I'm just not ready yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not ready, got nervous and got scared. But all that came starting from the mind. That came from the mindset. And that's where everything starts is in the mind. And I had a fear like, man, what if I mess up? And once fear set, sets in, then you begin to think, what if I mess up? Or what if I don't do good? Or, you know, or, or, or what, what if my mind just goes blank? See, when you have fear, other things starts to set in with that fear. And then now it comes doubt, comes worrying. And now a dream is just a dream. Or a goal is just a goal until action takes place. There has to be some action that takes place so you can get rid of that fear and have the courage to take that first step. You said, what do you mean? Well, without fear, how would you know if you have courage? How would you know if you had any courage without fear? You have to have the fear to even know if you have courage. They go like hand to hand. Like Adam's first words in the garden was this. His first words in the garden was, I hid myself because I was naked. I hid myself because I was naked because God was calling him and he heard the voice of God and he hid himself because he was naked. Why did he hide himself? He hid himself because that he was ashamed or he was afraid because he was disobedient to what God had told him not to do. And I felt that scripture because I did the same thing. I hid myself under drugs and alcohol. Like I was an addict for over 15 years. And I hid myself. And my fear was this. I feared that people was gonna know that I was doing drugs and then they were gonna look at me different. Because I had an image of people just, oh, he's a nice guy and he's a great guy and he helps people and he do this and he's that. And, you know, he's just, so he got a wonderful spirit. He's nice, kind, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. He was brought up good and brought up the right way. And I was, but I hid my drug addiction. And that's the worst thing that you could do is you hiding your drug addiction and you hiding it from people and you thinking that you're hiding it and you thinking you're the only one that knows and when you, when I'm hiding it and when I hid myself, it got worse because I'm thinking nobody knows. So I'm thinking I'm getting away with something. And now my life is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And now I'm just sitting here and I'm lost. And I hid myself. I know Dr. Dr. West said, and I still came back. He set the foundation last week. He said, and I still came back. And I took that in, even after my drug addiction, I still came back. I had the courage to get up and say, and admit that, hey, look, I had a problem. Something was wrong and I needed help. And I was turning every which way to try to find who I really was. I tried it in drugs, I tried it in alcohol. And when I was drinking the alcohol, I felt just as empty as the bottle that I just drank the alcohol out of after it was gone. I was just in so much turmoil, doubting myself, didn't know who I was. 
No, I was married, got a divorce. There's a lot of things that went on in my lifestyle that I'm not too proud of. And the only reason why that I was that way is because of the simple fact I got from under what I was rooted in and I got away from God. I was being disobedient. And sometimes today, that's what we do. Like today, we be disobedient to God. Moses, he was, he was in fear. He was afraid. Watch this. Moses was afraid to go down into Egypt. He was so afraid to go down into Egypt to fight Pharaoh because Pharaoh was more powerful than he was. So when he got when he went to God, God said, that staff you got in your hand, he said, I want you to throw it down. And when you throw it down, I want you and, and it's going to turn into a snake, but I want you to pick it up by his tail. Right then and there, when he picked it up by the tail and, and it turned back into the staff. He gained courage because he knew that God was going to be with him when he went down there in Egypt. So then he asked God, he said, well, what, who do I say that brought me unto you? He said, tell him I am brought me unto you. That gave him courage to know that you ain't going down there alone. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to do this thing for you. But I need you to go down and lead my people. But actually, look at this. Moses didn't actually lead him. That was God down there leading through Moses. But Moses had to gain that confidence and that, that faith is that God is with me always. He's going to be down there with me. And that's what I had to do. I had to go back and build my foundation. I had to go back to the roots of where I knew that I was going to, my help was going to come from. And I had to take some action and I had to take steps. I had to take so many steps in my life because it was like, my life felt like it was just over. How many of us felt like fear just sets in so much that we can't move? It paralyzes us. Franklin Roosevelt said the only thing to fear is fear itself. The fear itself. And he was a privileged guy. He was a privileged young man. He was privileged. But then also that he got paralyzed and he had polio and he was paralyzed and then he couldn't really move. He was disabled. And he had to go through rehab. And the time that he was going through that rehab, then that means he gained a fear. A fear of what? He gained a fear of fire. And the only reason why he had that fear of fire is because he had knowing that he couldn't move. And if there was a fire that took place, he wasn't going to be able to get out. His fear was, how am I going to get out? I can't move. And sometimes in life, situations in our life comes around, we get paralyzed. We stop ourselves from moving forward. We stop ourselves from moving forward. We will talk ourselves out of moving forward because of the things that comes into our mind, the thought that comes into our minds, and then we start saying, well, I can't do that. That's impossible. You know what I'm saying? Oh, what if this happens? And what if this happens? And then we start making excuses. But I'm here to tell you today that God came and saved me. And if he can do it for me, then he can do it for you because I'm no, he's no respect to person. He has no respect for persons. And when I got on this call, man, I was so nervous. And I didn't... I, I didn't know what to say, what I was going to say. But I learned this, that it's not up to me. I told God when I was 20 years old, I said, God, if you ever allow me to have kids, that I wouldn't do what my father did. Because my father left when I was at a young age. And I had a lot of hate in my heart for that. And I knew how it felt not to have a dad in my life or having a role model in my life. And I knew how that felt. So if one fear of mine was I didn't want my kids to be that. I didn't want my kids to feel the way that I felt. Was I going to be a good dad? Was I going to break that cycle? I want to be a, I wanted to be a man of courage to stand up and say, I'm going to be a great father. I'm going to be there for my kids. And you know what? I did that. I have eight beautiful kids, eight beautiful kids. And I've been in every last one of them's life since they were born. Haven't missed a beat, haven't missed a basketball game. 
You know, I, I gave them something that I didn't have. And I wanted to break that generational curse. So my question to you out there, men, how many of y'all have the courage to stand up and to just take evaluation of your own life and say, hey, what is it that I can change to be a better father, to be a better husband, to be a better mentor? What can I do? What is it that I can do? I remember my life was just in bondage and I felt like I was in Egypt. And then when you come out of bondage and you come out of it and like the children of Israel, now here they are going through the dividing waters of the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his chariots are coming at them. And they're coming at them. And they're looking, they're turning around and they're looking behind them. And they're looking from what's coming from the behind instead of looking what's going forward. And sometimes we look at our past lives and our experiences and then we look at that and we say it, and we let that be our, harm, our, our, our bondage and what's holding us back because we're looking back. And that's why the rear view mirrors are smaller than the, than the windshield. Because you got you to gotta look at the big picture. We don't want to look behind us because our past is your past. Dr. West said when he was talking to me and I was like, well, I did this and I did that. And he said, so? It doesn't matter what you did. That's a fact. The fact is, yeah, I was on drugs. The fact is, yeah, I wasn't a great father at a time in my life. Yeah, I wasn't a great husband at the time in my life. That was the facts. But the truth, the truth, I was born to be a king. I was born to be a son of God. And that's the truth. And when I really finally decided and I really looked at my life and evaluated my life and got sick and tired of being sick and tired, I had to repent. And all repent means is turning from your old wicked ways. And I wanted to come through a new path. And once I repented, and turn from my wicked ways. God starts sending people, great men, great people. And I begin to empty out my cup, my concepts, my opinions, how I thought it should be. I thought I knew everything. And it kind of reminded me of Moses at the burning bush. Remember when Moses was at the burning bush and the bush was burning, but it was not being consumed. And they said, Moses turned aside. Now, when he turned aside, he didn't turn aside as far as like just turning aside. No, he turned aside his concept, his opinions on why that bush was burning but wasn't being consumed. So I had to turn aside my thoughts, my opinions, my beliefs on how I thought it should be. And I had to reach back and I had to ask for help. I had to ask for help. And sometimes, men, we have so much pride going on and we don't have enough confidence and the ego gets in the way and pride that we don't want to ask another man for help because that makes us feel like less of a man. And we have to ask for help. First, we have to admit that we have a problem. Then we have to ask for help to get the help. And I still came back. And I still came back. I shouldn't be here. I had a fear. Every time I took a hit of dope, I thought I was going to be, I, that could have been my last breath. Now I went from selling dope, doing dope. Now I went from that to selling hope. Now I give developmental, optimal, personal existence. I try to empower the minds of people to let them know that you too can come out of Egypt. But first, you have to trust God. You have to put all your trust in him. All your trust in him. Put God first and all things will be added. Right in that chat right now, all. All. Put God first and all things will be added unto you. And, and then it goes on to say, put God first and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. And we have to really have that faith. We have to have that courage. We have to have that faith and that confidence. And we really have to just take action. 
Because one thing I know is that free be free breeds a lack of action. A lack of action breeds lacks of experience, and a lack of experience breeds lack of ignorance. And ignorance, all that means is not knowing or knowing and ignore the truth. And the truth is, you was born to be a king. You was born to be a king. You are somebody. No matter what you're going through today, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how tough it is, just know, just know that the Lord is on your side and man can't do nothing to you when you have your faith wrapped up in God and all your eyes are set on him. Don't get discouraged. Trials, tribulations will come. I guarantee you that. That's just life. But be, be a man of courage and have the confidence and the faith and the bravery to say, look, I'm not right. I need some help. And I'm going to go get it. And I'm going to go ask and I'm going to repent and I'm going to go to God first. And at the end of this conclusion, I want to leave you with this. Life's fire. Life's fire don't change eternal truths. That means God's purposes, God's principles, and God's promises remain. His word will not come back void. And if you have fear, fear is from the enemy. Courage, wisdom, knowledge is from God. And if you want some courage, you have to go to the one who is courage, and he has to dwell in you. And I'm going to say that again. Life's fire don't change God's eternal truths. God's purpose and principles and promises still remains. Hey, I thank you for your time. God bless. Well, optimum blessings, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, there's so many things that we can glean from and pull out of that. And uh, of course, courage can be gained. That's a message that resonated from what you shared with us. We want to always remember that, that courage can be gained. You made the statement, born to be a king, that speaks toward our eschatology, our life's assignment. And then you made something that's a resounding message that we need to understand. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulations. Listen, beloved, it's common. Know that it's common. But we're also encouraged because he told us that there's no temptation, there's no test, there's no trial that we will ever face, that he hasn't empowered us to be able to overcome. So you spoke about that things. Then you talk about the courage to overcome the addiction that came against you. Let me tell you, men of God, as we listen to this and as we're encouraged by this word, we must have the courage to overcome. He talked about building a foundation. And we build a foundation based upon the eschatology that God has given for our lives. He said that he has empowered us and given us the ability to subdue and multiply, that we are created in the image and likeness of God. That's our foundation, Genesis 1, We must hold on to that. And he spoke about he had to take the steps. Notice this, he, God empowered him but he had to take action. He had to have the courage to take the steps. God won't do for us what he has empowered us to do for ourselves. We need to get that, men of God. God will not do for us what he has empowered us to do for our steps. Now watch this. Then he spoke about escaping the fears of the past. Do not allow your past to hold you hostage. I heard him speak about that. Do not allow your past to hold you hostage. If our past is holding us hostage just because we are allowing it to take place, how do we escape that? How do we have the courage? He talked about it, renewing the spirit of the mind. So powerful, so powerful, so powerful. He talked about Moses using what was in his hand. It's already in you. All you have to do is give birth to it. He made a decision to give birth to what was already in him, but he had to overcome the environments that he had been socialized, socialized and modified in. Listen to that very carefully. You have the power to overcome the thing that thinks it has the power over you. Don't give power to what God has given you power over. So very, very powerful. That's powerful. And then I heard him say this, repent. 
listen to this. When you turn away, God will turn it around. We got to get that thing. When we turn away, God will turn it around. And I'm going to close it like this because you brought it down to the bottom. You put the exclamation point on it. You talked about ego and pride. Ego. Do we sometimes E, H, G, God, O, out? Do we find ourselves edging God out instead of exalting God only? So we thank you so much, so much, so much for sharing that with us. Father, we are mindful today and we are aware of who you are and we are aware of who you are and we have the courage to be who you have created us to be. We have the courage, Lord God, to stand because you said to have dominion and authority. So we walk in that dominion, we walk in that authority. And you know what, Lord, we come against every system or religion that would separate us from who you have called us to be. We walk in that, we have the courage to be that and we decree and declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, optimum blessing men of God, optimum blessing to all of those of you who are watching and who have been privileged to hear this man of God share with us this morning. Thank you so very much. And optimum blessing each and every one. Have a great day. Have a great morning. Thank you. Dr. John Mack, how you doing, sir? Oh, bless, 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 bless. Corey. Great word, Corey. Great word, man. Great word, Corey. Great word. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Optimum blessing, man of God. All right, brothers, we'll see you on uh, this next Tuesday with another mighty word. Y'all be blessed on the Take care. Have a good Amen. day. Good day.